Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, uh, we're going to be doing another Fantasy Football Week 2 Metric Matchups video. Uh, unfortunately, the last video I made <laughs> in terms of Metric Matchups, uh, the wide receiver in question uh, was put on IR, particularly Malcolm Mitchell. Uh, I still contend that if he was healthy, he probably was going to have a good matchup against Terrence Mitchell. Terrence Mitchell, of course, was targeted a ton in that game. They had a ton of PI calls against him, uh, but I digress. So this week, we're going to specifically be looking at a wide receiver of the Jacksonville Jaguars by the name of Marquise Lee. Uh, Allen Robinson, as you may or may not know, unfortunately uh, suffered a torn ACL uh, in the last game. And as a result, there's all this sort of question marks about, okay, was, what is the wide receiver core going to look like? Is Alan Hearns going to be the guy, even though there were some rumors, which who knows if they're true or not, that they were trying to trade Alan Hearns. Uh, and then, of course, you have the sort of situation with Marquise Lee, where he, he has improved each year. And I'm going to show you some of the improvements that he's had on a year-to-year -year basis. But has he improved enough to step in and, and give you some of the similar, you know, maybe not the same impact as Alan Robinson, but similar impact, um, at least in terms of what his role is going to be in this offense. So basically, we're going to look at Marquise Lee in terms of his overall data. Then we're going to look at uh, his uh, his matchup this week in terms of the Tennessee Titans and where there's some good things. And then, of course, look at the overall sort of impact in terms of why I'm pointing out Marquise Lee and why I think that you should... Uh, definitely think about investing in Marquise Lee, at least for this year in particular, uh, if he continues to make his improvements. Uh, so starting with Marquise Lee, now as you know, based on his college production, if you've seen any of my previous videos, uh, he had a 95 overall passing yardage market share production score, which pretty much hits every single high quality outcome that you could possibly want, at least potential high quality outcomes with Lee. You know, hit five-time All-Pro level, which the majority of five-time All-Pro people hit at least 85 or higher. Hit three-time All-Pro level, three-time Pro Bowl level, and of course, long-term starter level. So his production pretty much puts him into a situation where, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of what his potential could be. Uh, and, and his athleticism testing wasn't that bad either. Had a 72.48 explosive lower body strength score, 73.42 speed score, and a 78.41 flexibility score. He's not exactly Julio Jones or Calvin Johnson, but he does have above average athleticism in each athletic category, which is a good thing. So moving to his actual uh, production. At a macro level, his production hasn't been that great. Uh, 2014... Uh, was kind of a middling, uh, sort of uh, below average, not below average, but about average, a little bit above average in terms of all the wide receivers in the NFL based on his market share production at the NFL. Uh, 2015 had pretty much a down year that year, uh, and a lot of that was, you know, was due to injuries and all this other kind of stuff. And then 2016 is where he actually did have a pretty decent season overall in terms of production, at least from a market share standpoint. Uh, it's just that, uh, you know, he wasn't exactly like a top 10 or top 20 wide receiver or anything like that. Uh, but he was at least a top 50 to top 40 wide receiver, which is a significant improvement from where he was at the beginning of his career. So he has improved at a macro level, and he's also improved at a micro level. Uh, when you look at his first down conversion rate on first downs, uh, and this is basically uh, Alan Hearns compared to Marquise Lee, and I just wanted to bring Hearns into this just because he's, you know, Alan Hearns. Um, Marquise Lee is not quite as good as Hearns when it comes to the ability to, to create first downs on first down, but he's improved steadily. You know, from 2014, he only had a 38% a conversion rate, uh, then, he, then it got into a 57% conversion rate, and then in 2016, he got a 64% conversion rate on first downs uh, in terms of his ability to, to, to take first downs and convert them into first downs. So he's improved year after year in terms of first down situations. Uh, when you look at him in second down situations, Lee has also taken some um, decent strides, you know, going from 54% to 83% in 2015, even though that was kind of a limited year, and then 65% in uh, 2016. And he's actually been a little bit better than Alan Hearns when it comes to the ability to create first downs on second down uh, compared to Alan Hearns. Uh, and then, of course, you get to third down conversion rate, 
which is where Lee actually shines the most, uh, and he actually has a higher uh, third down conversion rate uh, than Alan Hearns. So when you look at Alan Hearns compared to Marquise Lee, uh, Lee has a, a better ability to convert on third down. And the basic way to kind of explain the differences between this two is that Alan Hearns does well when it comes to making first downs on first down at a higher percentage than Marquise Lee. While Marquise Lee is a little bit better uh, when it comes to um, second down and third down situations when it comes to his ability to convert um, in those particular situations. Uh, so when it comes to the money downs and those other type of downs, Lee has been able to do when, when he is targeted and makes a play, um, he is better than Hearns when it comes to those particular uh, situations. Uh, so in that way, that's kind of the differences between these two wide receivers. Hearns has definitely had a heck of a lot more overall production. Uh, he's been used a lot more in the offense, uh, and that probably may have had some impact in terms of these conversion rates as well, uh, because, you know, Hearns is being targeted a lot more in these situations while Lee is, I wouldn't say he's the decoy, but, you know, he's the other guy. So when you're the other guy, especially when you have guys like Allen Robinson and those other types of guys, you do get uh, easier opportunities to convert. But so far, Lee has shown. I mean, he's improved. I mean, that's the biggest thing I could say. And especially when it comes to first down conversion rate, which I think is um, really important uh, for most wide receivers to be at least good at, um, or at least above average. And he has been, he's become above average when it comes to that particular metric, uh, you know, converting on 64% uh, in 2016 in particular. So, and that was with fairly higher usage than he's used to in terms of just overall volume. So, Lee has improved year after year, and that's the biggest thing you can say for him uh, going forward. Uh, so then when you actually look at the matchup, so now we're going to go to Marquise Lee versus the Titans cornerbacks. Um, the reason I pointed this match out is because the Raiders had fun with the Titans secondary, and there's some reasons why, but here's the, here's the main reason why. When it comes to Marquise Lee versus the two main corners uh, for the Titans in Logan Ryan and LaShawn Sims, uh, Marquise Lee is significantly more athletic uh, than, than both these guys in terms of explosiveness, in terms of speed, and the only area where the Titans actually hurt Lee is when it comes to flexibility, and that's with uh, Logan Ryan. So um, if Logan Ryan is actually the, the cornerback that's there to kind of, you know, trail Marquise Lee and do that kind of stuff, um, he is going to be disruptive when it comes to short area sort of situations. So third and short areas, uh, the red zone, you know, areas like that where, where the field gets condensed a bit. Um, corners that are typically flexible, uh, you know, ha or have really good flexibility are typically guys that are very good in terms of out leveraging wide receivers in those particular situations. Uh, so in that way, uh, Marquise Lee runs into some issues with Logan Ryan, but not so much when it comes to LaShawn Sims. Uh, and of course, Logan Ryan versus Marquise Lee in sort of a uh, a deep ball situation, Lee would win that situation. So I'll um, just put that in perspective. And then we also have to go to the other fact that the Tennessee Titans passing defense uh, as a whole, uh, and this is their, their passing defense in week one, and this is also what their 2016 passing defenses look like when it comes against the pass. Um, week one was terrible. They were pretty much one of the worst passing defenses uh, in the NFL week one. And it shouldn't be surprising because it was a similar situation um, last year. You know, when you look at what they were able to do last year when it comes to, um, you know, first down conversion rate uh, on, on uh, second down, third down, uh, and their overall rates across the board, they just have not been good. You know, their passing defense has not been that great. And again, uh, when, when you have a defense that is not very good at, at preventing first down conversions, uh, you're going to have problems. And it also helps you in terms of fantasy because if you have a defense that is, it's a lot easier to get first downs against this defense, it's also a lot easier to get into the red zone. And if you get into the red zone, you have more opportunities to score, so on and so forth. Um, so I really like this matchup this week. Uh, again, Alan Hearns, as, as you've already seen with the other data points, Alan Hearns, I think, is still going to be the top cornerback when it comes to a volume standpoint. I think he, you know he's going to make up the bulk of the targets and those other kind of things um, for the most part when it comes to just moving the overall offense you know it's sort of a Jarvis Landry type of scenario but I think when it comes to Marquise Lee 
I would not be surprised if he continued to improve upon these numbers. You know, he did not have a very good start to his career. Then, of course, he followed it up with an injury. But he's proven in 2015 and 2016 that he can put up the types of numbers that he needs to put up when it comes to his conversion rate on first down, his conversion rate when it comes to second down especially, and his conversion rate when it comes to third down. And those are really good indicators in terms of uh, overall efficiency as a wide receiver. So he's improved his efficiency, efficiency year after year. And on top of that, you look at what his production was coming out of college and, of course, what his overall athleticism traits are. I think that this might be the year where Marquise Lee puts in some big dividends, and I think it all starts in Week 2 against the Tennessee Titans because of how poorly that passing defense is. Uh, and that's why I think that, you know, if Marquise Lee is available, uh, if you have sort of a trade situation that the value is right with a guy like this because I think um, he could be a valuable asset as, you know, a wide receiver three or that kind of situation. Um, then I, you know, or a matchup kind of base guy, I think you should take advantage of that because I think that based on everything, based on, you know, again, based on all the data that's available, uh, I think Marquis Lee has a chance. Um, and unfortunately, it sucks that a injury to a guy like Allen Robinson opened up this opportunity. But I do think that this is an opportunity that Lee could take advantage of because he's improved. And as a result, some good things can happen. So uh, again, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.